Fire locks. Bring in the weapon up over your left hip. So, from this position, there are 12 steps to loading and firing procedure. Be close attention. You first. Half cock. Fire lock. Bring in the weapon forward, pulling your hammer halfway back to the half cock for the safety. No matter how I pull upon the trigger, jostle the musket, hammer stays locked in place. You can see why this is vitally important in a moment. For your next, handle cartridge. Reach around to the pouch at the back of your hip. From it, you withdraw. Single paper cartridge, plain paper tube with the bottom crimp shut, the top folded over. Everything you need to load and fire the weapon contained in this simple device. Lead ball at the base, black powder on top. You tear open that cartridge using the only tool available. Soap to give you access to the black powder, which you then pour into the pan here. Prime in the weapon. You close covers, shut the pan, see when that steel prison down over. Cast about, bring the weapon to your left side, where you then charge with cartridge. Pouring the remaining powder down the barrel, you pop the paper wad in it, taking the musket ball with it. Remove your ram rods, and with those rammers then, you ram down the cartridge. Pour some powder, paper, and ball onto the base of the barrel, tightly packed. Remove your rammers, return it back into your brass pipe, and soak it for your later use. You bring the weapon up, you will be told to make ready, bringing the hammer completely back, to present or take aim, leveling your weapon downfield towards the enemy. Finally, you'll receive instruction to give fire, like so. Because what it is, we hide everything. And the idea is that you come in here and you use your intuition. Do I want to go that way, this way, or that way? And see what you discover. So it's, a, I think, a very healthy thing for people to open themselves up to discovery. This piece here is the typical type of Johnson approach to what is in a sculpture park because my work is very interactive. So uh, there's something else going on with the actress back here and a couple of fellows coming on to her, making her an indecent offer with some cash. And so um, Renoir just didn't happen to catch that, I did, even though I wasn't there.
I always wanted a restaurant called Rats because it makes people say, what's rats? Uh, God, got to eat there? A lot of people will look at the inside of the restaurant and feel like it was built in the uh, 19th century. No one would forget it once they heard it. President Carter. Yeah, when yeah. he came. I, President yeah. Carter came right, up, right over here. Yeah. He came in right here, People's Bakery. Too. I got I got picked up by the Secret Service. Because remember when we were kids, we had the Burgers Number One stickers? Yeah. yeah. And I used to, I had one on my car. I had an extra one. And he's coming down on his limo. And, 
I had my Burgers number one bumper sticker. I had the stuff off it. I ran for the car because I was going to put the bumper sticker on the back of the presidential car. Oh, that's a good idea, Rick. Did you figure that all by yourself? Yes, I did. <laughs> it was a spur of the moment thing, you know what I mean? I got that close, and these two guys picked me up and dragged me right off, and the rest is history. You know why I would bring somebody to Burg number one? Because this is the place I was born. This is the place I grew up. This is the place that I love. And this is the place where you can't get better food. Right. Yeah. to bring anybody from out of town, from anywhere. Anywhere in this world, come here for the food. And there's a lot of restaurants to choose from. Yeah. You won't be disappointed in any of them. Just this little area, this little enclave, the restaurants we got here, we put them up against anywhere else in the country. And the Berg is known for double parking. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that when you go in the Find a spot, get out of your car and start walking. You're going to find a great place. That's right, man. Matter of fact, uh, two weeks ago, I brought a friend of mine I work with. He, he lives up in Bayville. Yeah. And um, he asked me, like, what's a good place to go eat? And I told him, I says, what do you want? And he says, well, I'd like a burger or something. So I got the place for you. I says, oh, let's go to Rossi's. He goes, where's that? I says, not far. It's about 10 minutes from my house. I'll take you there. And uh, we went there on a Friday, which I thought it was going to be packed. We got lucky. I walked in there in our postal uniforms. Yeah. And um, there was two seats available at the bar. I says, well, we'll eat at the bar. And we had the, the burgers. I uh, had a Jack and Coke. He had a beer. And he couldn't say enough about how he, how he loved that. Yeah. He wants to go back again. Right up the street the other way, you had more serious kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, Marsilius. My mother used to take me there as a kid all the time, man. Yeah. Well, that was, that was a good place. If you were, if you were an altar servant, right. you uh, yeah. had anything right. to do with I the, couldn't get into they'd that. Have, they'd have dinner, right? The, right. the moms would... I was no like, good with Latin. <laughs> I tried being an where altar boy. It, where, was it, where was it the wine you had a problem with? I like lamb. Michi has good lamb. Michi Mano serves lamb? I believe they do. I, last time I was there with my wife, I ordered that. I'm telling you, we're well, with plants. We're going to with plants, oh yeah. At the Rossi's, man, you had to have dessert, so you had to have a ganoli. <laughs> there was a few places to have a ganoli. You know, you can go to Barbero's, I went to People's. It was, it originally was just, they just sold bread. Right. All you can get was bread, they didn't have any, any baked products, right. no cookies or cakes. Right. And then when they, after they rebuilt, they started with the yeah. cookies. Right. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Well, this was like the second part of uh, Mass. After you went to church down the street, then you had to walk to the bakery. You had to get your rolls. Bread. You had to get like pastry and all the stuff for dinner. And then you go home. Another so. thing about that too was my grandfather, being from Sicily, and a baker, he was always a critic yes. on different things. And when I was growing up. You never went out and bought anything because my grandfather would make it. Right. I wish I learned from him how to bake, you know, and how to cook, but I don't, you know what I mean? And if it wasn't for the restaurants and the bakeries in the Berg, the stuff that we remember growing up would all be gone. is now 10 years old, and we're the first brew pub in New Jersey, that's why we're called Triumph. Right now, every, everyone is, this is like their home in Princeton. This is like a mainstay of Princeton, as is right now. I think this is a perfect location for the ambiance and for the electric, eclectic menus that we have. It's a lot different, it's not just burgers, it's not just beer, it's not high class, it's both. 
our, our whole main focus is to have somebody in a suit or someone in blue jeans rubbing elbows eating together and being comfortable. If you liked what you've seen and are interested in more information, log on to visitcapitalregion.org.